Welcome to Montgomery Reimagined. I'm Iris Fargeta, your host of this special program. Today, we'll show you how the Obama administration is working with Montgomery County's Latino residents and lawmakers to plan and implement policy changes that can benefit the area's Latino community. You're probably wondering, why pay so much attention to the Hispanic community? Because White House officials have realized that at more than 54 million strong, Hispanics comprise the largest and fastest growing population segment in the U.S. According to the U.S. Census, the Latino population increased more than 15 percent in the last 10 years. And in Montgomery County, Latinos have also become the largest minority. 17 percent of the population in the area is Latino. And that's also true for the rest of the nation. Therefore, in recognition of the role Hispanics play and will continue to play in the region and in this country's economy, labor force, and other issues affecting the future of the nation, the White House has been organizing Hispanic Community Action Summits across the country to engage Latinos and discover new ways to improve their lives. Let's take a look at how the White House Hispanic Community Action Summit unfolded here in Montgomery County. We want to work with you. We it's the White House Hispanic Community Action Summit, a way for senior Obama administration officials to connect with local Hispanic community members as well as county and state lawmakers. The theme of the summit, winning the future, President Obama's agenda and the Hispanic community. The goal, to discuss issues that are critical to the Hispanic community and the nation. We needed to get out of Washington, D.C. We needed to go beyond the Beltway to take action to work with you and have constructive dialogues that identify solutions to those concerns and to develop action plans in order to address those solutions. The summit took place at Blair High School in Silver Spring. More than 300 participants and nearly 100 federal officials participated in the day-long event. Your voice in government must be louder and stronger, and that's what today is about. Uh, it's also a recognition by the White House, I think, that they need to do a better job of reaching out to our community. And the fact that they have so many uh, officials here today uh, engaging with our community is a very good sign. Montgomery County Council Vice President Nancy Navarro, who's also a member of the White House Commission on Educational Excellence for Hispanics, organized the summit in the county and convinced the White House to have the event in Maryland, since the Hispanic population has more than doubled in the region. Now we have people who are here who are second, third generation and are very actively involved, want to have a say, want to make a contribution. And so it is, I think, uh, a major statement for the White House and for this president uh, to take the show on the road, to listen to the average citizen. Unlike other conferences, at this summit, the audience sets the agenda and organizers use breakout sessions and note takers to capture the needs and interests of the Hispanic community and the nation including concerns about immigration, the economy, health care, and education. I think it's really important for the administration to come down to the local level. I'm glad the federal government, at least this part of the federal government, is taking this issue seriously. I wish we could just get the legislative side of the federal government to take it seriously. More than 20 summits have already been held in cities across the nation. The idea resulted from a National Hispanic Policy Conference that took place last year in Washington, D.C. While critics believe it's all part of election year politics, Latino residents and leaders just hope the summit can bring about the policy changes that make a difference in their community. It's certainly very welcome, and we hope that this kind of interaction will be promoted and continued. I particularly hope that partnerships between nonprofits, businesses, and government can become more frequent and more fluid and that we can all be part of the solution. When we come back, the White House Hispanic Community Action Summit and immigration changes that impact thousands of undocumented students. Don't go away. County Cable Montgomery, your information station. Welcome back to Montgomery Reimagined. On this program, we're reviewing the events of the White House Hispanic Community Action Summit, which took place recently in our county. The topic of immigration reform took center stage at the event. Latino community members and local as well as state elected officials continue to advocate for comprehensive immigration reform. 
but many are hopeful the president's recent executive order to suspend deportations of young undocumented immigrants will at least benefit Maryland's Latino students who are college bound. We have to just get a new password because I forgot. Steve Gomez is a dreamer, a dreamer like thousands of other undocumented students who dream of going to college and living in the U.S. without the fear of deportation. I came to this country when I was a year and a half old. Since then, my family applied for residency, but they weren't able to get it. My parents were deported in 2009, and I was supposed to be deported in 2010. But I fought hard. But Steve Gomez and other dreamers like him may be closer to reaching their American dream now that President Obama has issued a temporary executive order to halt deportations of young undocumented immigrants. Effective immediately, the Department of Homeland Security is taking steps to lift the shadow of deportation from these young people. The president made the announcement on the heels of the recent White House Hispanic Community Action Summit, which took place in Montgomery County earlier this summer. Many county and state elected officials applaud the president's decision. It's a huge step forward for our nation's broken immigration system. When, pres when the president stands up for these young people, many of whom know no other country than the United States, he stands on the right side of history. He stands for their future and he stands for justice. Long overdue and the right thing to do. The president said enough is enough. We're not going to deport these young people. Uh, we're going to tap into their talents and their skills as we build a better America. So I, I commend the president for that. The president's policy change could help close to one million immigrants who were brought to the U.S. as children. The measure benefits DREAM Act eligible young people who have lived in the U.S. for at least five years without committing any crimes or have either graduated high school, have received a GED, or have completed military service. The new order also enables eligible immigrants to apply for a two-year work permit and a driver's license. Right now, a 16-year-old who is undocumented cannot apply for a driver's license. And what happens? They drive without a license. So this can have an incredible potential. Opponents of the measure argue the new policy is a backdoor amnesty plan. But White House officials stress it is only a temporary stopgap measure that focuses resources on high-priority undocumented immigrants. The Department of Homeland Security made a, an announcement about uh, how they're going to um, work um, to prioritize um, criminals, others, and, deep, and, and also um, provide um, a, uh, some pro provide prosecutorial discretion in the form of deferred action for certain young people. Immigration attorneys at nonprofit agencies like Casa de Maryland welcome the measure, but are concerned the application process may take too long. It's not a complex procedure, and we would have hoped to see them begin very quickly so that we can get this group of individuals out of the pipeline as soon as possible and, and get them in a situation where they have a firm right to be here for at least two years. County and state officials believe the new executive order will encourage the passage of the DREAM Act referendum in the state of Maryland. The legislation would allow undocumented students to be eligible for in-state college tuition rates. Maryland voters are scheduled to vote for the referendum in November. And I think that that moves us a long way in the direction of passing the DREAM Act here in the state of Maryland. This is a tremendous effort uh, on behalf of civil rights and human rights, not only in the state of Maryland, but across um, the United States of America. While officials and community members may be pleased with the president's measure, they made it clear at the White House Hispanic Community Action Summit that more needs to be done to solve the broken immigration system. What we ultimately need is some kind of comprehensive immigration reform. It's going to require a majority in the Congress and the House and the Senate uh, that's willing to put their heads together and come up with a bipartisan approach to solving this problem. In the meantime, dreamer Steve Gomez, who's part of the immigration advocacy group at Casa de Maryland, is not giving up until his dream becomes a reality. I'm fighting for the federal DREAM Act because here at Casa de Maryland, we believe that if you work hard, if you're a good student, that you should be able to succeed just like anyone else. White House officials say they will continue to use the Community Action Summits to encourage Hispanics to urge legislators to support immigration reform. For more information on the policy that stops deportations, visit www.ice.gov. Coming up, Latinos discuss labor issues. Don't go away. Have a kid.
so you're ready for any emergency. Develop a plan for what you and your family will do before disaster strikes, and stay informed during severe weather any way you can. Visit ready.gov for ways to prepare your family for emergencies. In the coming decades, Latinos will continue to drive the labor force as they will account for 60% of the nation's population growth over the next 30 years. That's the reason worker safety concerns were at the top of the agenda during the recent White House Hispanic Community Action Summit in Montgomery County. Labor Department officials met with community agencies to promote workplace safety and workers' rights. According to the 2010 census, the number of fatal work injuries for Hispanic workers rose by 4%, and studies show abuse cases continue to rise. Él me agarró con el brazo acá y me dejó morado el brazo y después me dijo, sorry. Yo recibí reempujones, uh, me eché un poco de, de harina en la cabeza, uh, también me agarró del brazo y me dejó morado el brazo. Employer abuse is a common problem in the area's Latino immigrant community. Teresa Amaya is filing complaints against her former employer for unpaid wages, sexual harassment, and physical abuse. Él me dijo a mí que que por cuánto yo me podía acostar con los demás compañeros o con él, por cuánto yo. Entonces yo le decía que yo yo había llegado a trabajar, no a buscar hombres. Casa de Maryland attorney Sheena Wadhaven is helping Teresa to file her complaints. She says many cases go unreported because immigrant women don't know their rights and often fear being deported. I think it's especially of concern for the immigrant population, for low-wage workers, because they are often the ones who are given the least protections. But federal officials are taking advantage of the White House Hispanic Community Action Summits to promote workplace safety and enhance partnerships with Latino community agencies like Casa de Maryland to stop abuses on the job. We are going to work with people at the table from Casa de Maryland, from other organizations to bring awareness to that and to bring our federal partners at the Department of Labor who can provide resources in English and in Spanish so that people know not only what their rights are but also about worker safety. Labor officials say they're also increasing efforts to reduce fatal accidents in construction environments. More than 4,600 people died on the job in 2010. Studies show construction is one of the most dangerous professions. The number of fatalities among Hispanic construction laborers averages about 122 deaths per year. Unfortunately, many Latinos are injured on the job at a higher disproportionate rate than other workers, as well as, unfortunately, fatalities. So these are issues that we continuously work on. Efforts to prevent heat illness in outdoor workers and to teach them about their rights have also been launched through Casa de Maryland and other agencies. The issue of worker safety is important in Maryland because of the large number of low-wage immigrant workers that we have um, in the state. These workers contribute in large part to our local economy. However, they are often the most marginalized workers and the most likely to be hurt on the job. So this program is great because it gives us the opportunity to partner with the government and get the word out to our community. Teresa Amaya is encouraged to know that the federal government and Latino agencies are stepping up efforts to alert more people about their rights on the job. She only hopes more undocumented workers are encouraged to speak out. Que denuncien, que no se dejen, que no, no porque somos ilegales, que no tengamos miedo. Todos los Latinos tenemos que uh, decir lo que sentimos y los maltratos que recibimos, abuso laboral. Federal officials plan to work with local Latino leaders to organize a workplace safety conference in Maryland in the near future. And there are plans to hold more community action summits later this year in other parts of the nation. The White House says the initiative has established dozens of community partnerships and encouraged more Hispanics to participate in federal programs. The results of the summits will be part of a special report that will help the Obama administration to draft policy changes that benefit the community. To read the interim report on the web, visit www.whitehouse.gov slash Hispanic. Thanks for joining us on another edition of Montgomery Reimagined. I'm Iris Argueta.